My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I hope you want to make friends. I'm just trying to help you make some money. My job's not just to entertain, but to educate, put it in context, teach. Call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Let's talk about pain. The house of pain. Raw, nasty pain. Not the kind that stops with icy hot aspirin cream or even a morphine trip. That's just physical pain. I am talking about the kind of agony you don't get over. The pain of getting things wrong in the stock market. This is something that happens every day, including this one, Dow flat, S&P drop 0.272%, NASDAQ nosedive 1.71%. But you don't care when it happens to the other guy. You only care when it happens to you. And I don't blame you. Today we convened our first CNBC Investing Club meeting. Oh, my God, it was so much fun. Where I pretty much bear it all. And I got to speak to a special woman who happens to live in my daughter's old stopping grounds of Talent, Oregon. She asked me about the stock of Boeing. Now, have you ever noticed how nobody's ever stumped on TV? They've already got some glib answer. And, and you know what? I'm the last person to criticize. I've been running a lightning round for 16 straight years. That's kind of the essence of off the cuff. But this one hit me hard. It had me struggle. It, it kind of had me blinded. Because the charitable trust has been pummeled by Boeing of late. Although we have a good cost basis on the stock, I am totally beaten down by this one. Really, exhausted. This morning I had to hear about how American Airlines would have to cut its flight schedules because it didn't get the Dreamliners it needs from Boeing. Why? Well, of course it's the FAA, right? They see some problems with the planes. Problems, by the way, that management assured me would have been fixed more than six months ago. Given that this thing is delayed until late in the second quarter, we'll only be seeing these planes one full year after my sources told me not to worry about it. But my sources, they were good. They were. I mean, they said the problem would be fixed pronto. Meanwhile, China's recertifying the 737 MAX, the troubled airplane that was to blame for two accidents that killed hundreds of people. But this thing still hasn't been greenlit. And there are no new orders from Boeing's biggest customer yet. Given the political tensions, maybe there won't be. So what do you do in this situation? Now, part of me just wanted to tell Jolene that she shouldn't worry about it. The stock will be fine, right? And we always hear that, right? I'll be fine. But st stand back. Part of me wanted to say the whole thing's unfair. I mean, what does the FAA want? David Calhoun's head on the silver platter? If you gave him the CEO's head, would it make a difference? Oh, the gears were worrying in my head, especially if steam wasn't coming out of my ears. I was just on the verge of saying, you know what? Enough already. Let me out of the house of pain. But then I recalled that just this morning, I had read a story and then saw the CEO, CVS, the drugstore chain, boosting its buyback, raising its forecast, setting the stock up almost 5% in a day. Now, what does CVS have to do with Boeing? Well, CVS is now up nearly 30 bucks from where it was trading when the Chapel Trust bailed on it. We battled this one for ages. We were glad to sell it at a slight profit. When if we had just been able to handle the pain of a story that we knew well, we could have crushed it. We always dreamed CVS would announce a buyback, but they couldn't because the balance sheet was so stretched from the, uh, from the acquisition. Well, it turns out we just, just had to be more patient to announce the $10 billion. We never dipped our feet into the promised land because we couldn't take the pain. It was just too much for me. Oh, and then I thought of Viacom. I mean, this is all happening when you're doing this thing. It's like, foo, 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 foo. I thought of Viacom. Now, that's the stock that got cut in half on our watch. I couldn't believe how we could be so wrong about the darn they thing. Nothing. CEO Bob Backers was doing a terrific job monetizing everything, setting up Paramount Plus for streaming. The franchises were making fortunes. But like CVS, we sold CBS. <laughs> a little network joke. We sold Viacom for the charitable trust, this time at the bottom. Why? Couldn't take the pain. Stock went up fourfold almost, you, fourfold, almost immediately. Because it, it never should have been down so much in the first place. I hate putting on anything on CBS ever since that, but eh, sometimes Eagles play on it. 
So what I told Jolene in Oregon is that sometimes you just have to take the pain. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes there's no choice. If you sell Boeing stock here, I think you will be kicking yourself, but I don't know when. I can't tell. Just like those of us who were foolish enough to sell CVS or Viacom, because we couldn't see when the term would happen. We couldn't tell. But let's step back for a second, though. I'm not a dig in the heels guy. I'm a discretion is the better part of valor person. So why have such angst about Boeing? Because while the short term is absolutely horrible and I can't take being kidded about it anywhere, I think the long term is ridiculously bullish. That said, unlike so many other commentators, I freely admit that I've been very wrong. But you take the pain when you've got a real thesis, and my thesis here is real simple. First, most people on Earth have never set foot on an airplane. Now, that's a staggering fact, isn't it? We think of air travel as fairly commonplace, but most people in the world aren't wealthy enough to enjoy it. The thing is, that's changing. But just take China. In the last few decades, China's lifted 800 million people into the middle class, and they now view air travel as almost a rite of passage. Rite of passage for the non-French out there. Regular viewers know that I have huge problems with the Chinese government, but not with the people. Uh, I, I just think my, my view is no different, though, it turns out, than the current president or the last president. But you have to believe the Chinese will buy more planes from Boeing because they can't do without them. Which brings me to the second reason to own Boeing. There are only two companies on Earth that can make large commercial aircraft at scale. One of them is Airbus. Airbus is sold out. Boeing may have awful execution right now, but it's still part of a beautiful duopoly where they can charge an arm and a leg for the planes because they, uh, they only have one competitor. Third, as Gary Kelly, the outstanding outgoing CEO of Southwest Air, told me this morning when I interviewed him, airlines that want to shrink their carbon footprint need to retire their older, less fuel-efficient planes that also happen to be, by the way, noisier. And that means they need to replace them with new ones. You can't just keep using the same old aircraft. They do get used up. Now that big business is taking climate change much more seriously, almost every airline in the world has a fleet that's too old. They need Boeing. Finally, if you believe, as I do, that the pandemic's finally running its course, that the Omicron strain will be dealt with, then you have to expect a huge travel boom next year. You, you, there's no way you can. There's so much pent-up money and pent-up demand. The second great reopening should lead to tremendous air traffic, especially when travel restrictions are lifted worldwide. You don't have to quarantine. Now, I know there are a million opinions floating around about how contagious Omicron is, very, and how deadly it is, not as deadly as Delta, and whether the booster shots work or not. But I need you to get, start getting your arms around the concept of acceptable risk. Acceptable risk. That's what I'm looking for. We aren't just going to do nothing as we wait for COVID to get stamped out. you got two kinds of people when it comes to vaccinations. You either get all three shots, right, in which case you're basically fine, or you don't care whether you get sick in the first place. Either way, I think a surge in air travel will be the biggest change in this new hybrid work world. People want to go away and explore with Zoom, but th therefore they can do it wherever they want. They can take off days, Zoom, go somewhere. Of course, some investors are worried that Zoom has killed business travel, which would be bad for Boeing. However, I think there will always be some business travel. What matters more, though, is that there simply aren't anywhere near enough planes right now available, I mean, at the airlines to meet all the demand. So these orders will be placed as soon as governments around the world say it's OK. And I have faith that the Boeing board of directors will do what's necessary to make the regulators happy. The bottom line, sometimes a company's long-term prospects are so strong that you've got to be willing to endure the short-term agony when management screws up. And they are. But that's why it's worth it to take the pain in Boeing. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.